On September 5th, 2016, Avery Schaller hiked herself directly into a life or death situation. She was trapped high up on Idaho's Devil's Bedstead, which, if you couldn't tell from the name, is not the kind of mountain where you can just mess around. Schaller's hike had started out fine in the morning, but it was now past 12 p.m. and the soft snow that she had been climbing up was starting to freeze, making it incredibly slick and incredibly dangerous. One moment of hesitation or one miscalculated step would almost certainly send her sliding down the mountain rapidly, which was a trip that she would almost certainly not survive. Schaller knew that she needed to get the hell off the mountain and fast. And so rather than continuing to climb up, she turned around and tried her best to retrace her steps down the icy slope. However, she quickly realized that this was far too dangerous and so she paused. And it's at this moment that she realized her only two options were to either keep climbing up or to die. She had about 70 feet of slick terrain to climb before she would reach a drier, safer route. That might not sound like much, but all 70 feet were solidly in what we call a no-fall zone, which means that a fall here would likely be fatal. Falling wasn't an option, or at least it wasn't supposed to be. Gathering all of her strength, Schaller began to climb, reducing her distance to safety to only 60 feet, soon only about 30 feet, and eventually only 10 feet. She was in the home stretch, only a few more moves, and she would be in the clear. And so she grabbed onto her next rock, but unlike all of the previous ones, this rock came loose. She began to fall backwards, and then everything went black. And that probably should have been the end of this story. But as fate would have it, the story of Avery Schaller was not ending here, but was rather just getting started. This is the story of the woman who lived every hiker's worst nightmare. As an avid hiker myself, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, this story scares the absolute shit out of me. If this is your first time watching my channel, then hi, I'm Kyle. I'm an experienced backpacker and hiker with well over 5,000 miles under my belt, as well as a few through hikes like the Appalachian Trail and most of the Pacific Crest Trail. If you're a returning viewer, however, let's say you found yourself watching a few of my videos now, maybe even more than a few, then welcome back. And I would really, really appreciate it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and help me get to my dream of 1 million subscribers, which is very far away and very far-fetched, but I'm gonna try my absolute best to get there. On September 5th, 2016, Avery Schaller decided to go for an ambitious hike. The 25-year-old was living in Ketchum, Idaho, and she was no stranger to the outdoors. While doing her undergraduate at Middlebury College, Schaller joined the Mountain Club and fell in love with adventuring in the backcountry. She eventually became a guide for the Mountain Club, and she also took a wilderness first responders course. She continued her outdoor pursuits after graduating, and by the fateful day that she set out to climb Devil's Bedstead East, Avery Schaller was solidly in the experienced hiker category. And I wanted to bring that up because many of the stories I cover on this channel involve inexperienced and underprepared hikers, but I want to stress that that was absolutely not the case with Avery Schaller. She definitely knew her way around the mountains and she was very experienced. In fact, she had even climbed Devil's Bedstead's West Peak a week before she set out to climb the East Peak. And since she had already conquered one of them, it makes sense that she wanted to do the other as well. And so at 8 a.m., Avery Schaller set out by herself to check off the East Peak. Hiking solo was a common practice for her. In fact, much of her adventuring in the Idaho mountains 
had been done solo. She was always very safe about it. Avery made sure to tell her friends where she was going and when she was expected to return. She was carrying all the necessary gear for the conditions. She was carrying a first aid kit and she even had an emergency satellite beacon. And so on paper, she was doing everything right. Now Devil's Bedstead is in the Pioneer Mountains of Central Idaho and the mountain has a reputation that's as intense as the name itself. It's 11,865 feet in elevation and it has this intimidating vertical wall which resembles a mini version of the famous Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. There are no easy routes up the mountain, though some of the routes are definitely easier than the others. The first few hours of Avery's hike flew by, and before she knew it, it was 11 a.m. It's at this point in the hike that she had a decision to make. The trail she was following split into two different routes, the left route and the right route. Avery described the left route as, quote, more traveled and safer. She described the right route as, quote, more adventurous and more fun. Avery was feeling confident, so she made the fateful decision to take the fun route over the safer route. About an hour later, she came to deeply regret this decision. Now, the route that Avery had taken was more fun because instead of winding up the mountain at a relatively gentle grade, this route went straight up, requiring more technical scrambling and more exposure to the elements. And to make things even more fun, a layer of snow had fallen the night before, but the snow had since started melting, making it soft and relatively safe to traverse. But the sun was moving and her route was slowly falling into the shadows. After an hour of climbing up the snowy switchbacks, all the snow began to freeze. What started out as a soft, cushy snow, easy to get solid footing in, had now changed to a slick and dangerous ice. Avery found herself in the middle of a death trap. Her first instinct was to turn around and try to retrace her steps down the mountain. This was a reasonable idea, but Avery quickly discovered that it would not be possible. The path that she had traveled so far was also icing over. And so after trying to take a few steps back, she realized the icy conditions would make descending far too dangerous. Schaller paused and took a moment to assess her increasingly dicey situation and to also fight back panic. At this point, she had few options left and none of them were good. She could shelter in place, hoping that another hiker would find her or notice her somehow, but that could take an indefinite amount of time, and Avery feared that she would not survive a night in the freezing temperatures. She could use her cell phone or her emergency GPS beacon to report an emergency and hopefully be rescued, or Avery realized that she could climb up a steep and icy 70 feet to a point where the terrain was dry and safe. And if successful, she would be in the clear. The entire 70 feet was solidly in a no fall zone. If she fell during this climb, the results would be nothing short of catastrophic. Faced with these options, Avery Schaller swallowed her pride and attempted to call 911 on her cell phone. However, she was deep in the backcountry, And so unsurprisingly, her call did not go through. She then grabbed her emergency beacon and she did something that every hiker dreads. She hit the SOS button. This move might seem like an obvious life-saving one to make, but I want you to keep this quote from Avery in mind. It's kind of a big deal to use one of these things. A whole rescue team would come for me and I was a little embarrassed because I got myself stuck up here. That embarrassment quickly turned into horror because after holding the SOS button for 20 seconds, the emergency beacon died. The device powered off despite having 50% battery life when she had started her hike, likely due to the cold temperatures. Avery Schaller was out of options. She could either wait around and die in the cold or she could climb 
up through the no fall zone and hopefully make it to safety. And so with a sudden rush of do or die energy, Avery began to climb and she almost made it. When Avery was only about 10 feet away from safety, she reached up, she grabbed a rock and this rock came loose. She then felt herself falling backwards and then everything went black. This is literally every hiker's worst nightmare. Avery Schaller somehow defied the odds and survived this fall. And as miraculous as this was, when she regained consciousness, she quickly realized that she had just fallen out of one life or death situation and landed directly into another. Avery was seriously injured during the fall. She couldn't see out of her left eye. She was experiencing pain from a likely broken rib. Her right knee was smashed in. Her left arm was in severe pain and she was bleeding from her left leg. She was essentially immobilized, trapped deep in the Idaho wilderness with no emergency beacon and freezing temperatures setting in. It's at this point that she knew she was going to die. And she also knew that she wouldn't have been the first hiker to die on Devil's Bedstead because a year earlier, that's exactly what happened to another experienced outdoorsman from Vermont, Luke Richardson. Just like Schaller, Richardson had fallen due to loose rock. And oddly enough, his body was actually found in a spot only 200 feet away from where Schaller currently laid. Avery Schaller wrapped herself in an emergency blanket and began to reflect on her inevitable death. She felt incredibly guilty about the hardship that her family would now have to endure simply because she had decided to take the fun route instead of the safe one. She thought about how she wasn't ready for this at only 25 years of age. And then she started to drift off to sleep which we all know that means the end. However, she suddenly heard the loud squeak of a pika, which is a small squirrel looking animal that lives high up in the mountains of the Western United States. The pika actually woke her back up and she took this as a sign that she needs to stay awake and fight for her life at all costs. Still, her situation was dire. Avery grabbed her phone and with limited battery left, she pondered how best to use it. Should she try to call for help again? I mean, she knew she had no service, so this seemed pointless. She could, however, use the remaining battery life to record a goodbye video for her friends and family. This would hopefully provide them some closure. Ultimately, Avery decided that if she were to record that goodbye video, she would be essentially giving up. She decided that she wasn't going down without a fight. And so she called 911 again. This call didn't go through either. And due to either determination or perhaps frustration or even desperation, Avery called 13 more times. All 13 of these 911 calls failed. But then on the 14th attempt, something different happened. In the second miracle of her day, Avery's 14th call went through and she was actually connected to a Blaine County dispatcher. But the call was brief before the cell signal cut out. So brief, in fact, that Avery in her injured state wasn't even sure if the call was real or if it was just a hallucination. For the dispatcher on the other end, however, the call was very real and it was apparent that Avery was in bad shape. On the phone, she couldn't even recall basic information about where she was and what she was doing. And that's about as far as they got before the call dropped. Dispatch and Avery played phone tag a few times, but they were thankfully able to get connected again. And this time it lasted for roughly a half hour. And in that half hour, the dispatcher, Rod Gregg, got busy saving Avery's life. Not only did he finally manage to gather all the information he needed about her location and condition, but he also made it a point to keep her awake. He knew that if she fell asleep, death would soon follow. But eventually Avery's phone ran out of battery 
And at this point, she was still unsure if the phone conversation was real or if she had just imagined it. She heard something about a helicopter being sent, but surely this was too good to be true. About an hour passed, and by this point, Avery had fully convinced herself that nobody knew where she was and nobody was coming to save her. But then she heard a loud noise. She looked up and sure enough, there was a helicopter approaching her. The sounds and the sight of the helicopter was so jarring that Avery knew she was not imagining it this time. And for the first time, since her route had frozen over some hours earlier, Avery Schaller knew that she was gonna make it out alive. The helicopter lowered down a rescuer and a basket on a cable. This rescuer then clipped Avery in, and then the helicopter pulled the pair back up. And just like that, Avery Schaller was whisked away to safety. She was rescued by Two Bear Air. Two Bear Air is a charity organization that helps with search and rescue missions in the Northwest, and they do it at no cost to the victims and no cost to the taxpayer. It's an incredible organization. This is actually the second time that Two Bear Air has been mentioned on my channel. The first time was the story of Madeline Connolly's miraculous rescue, which I'll link at the end of the video. Two Bear Air just happened to be around the area of Avery Schaller when she called 911 and therefore they were able to get to her relatively quickly, speeding over to her location at 170 miles per hour. They also just so happened to have all the special equipment needed to extract her on board and ready to go. And they also just so happened to spot her easily from the air due to the reflections on the emergency blanket that she was wearing. All of this was an incredible stroke of luck, which was much needed after the nightmare that Avery had just been going through. Avery Schaller made a full recovery and she continues to hike to this day. She gave me her blessing to make this video, which I really, really appreciate. And one thing I want you all to keep in mind is that after researching a bunch for this video, after talking to Avery, she deeply regrets some of the decisions that she made that day, and she definitely knows that she's lucky to be alive. Some people don't learn from their mistakes, but I hope you believe me when I say that Avery most definitely has. Please keep that and please keep her remorse in mind before you judge or criticize her. I've linked an article on Avery Schaller's story in the description below. It's by David Woolman, and I highly recommend you all read it because it actually goes into even more detail than I covered in this video. Lastly, I hope that you all remember this story before you head out on your next outdoor adventure. This video is not meant to scare you away from hiking, but rather to encourage you to make good decisions when in the backcountry and to keep yourself safe. Everything we do in life has risks, and sometimes those risks are actually worth taking. After all, if we never took any risks, we'd just be locked up inside our houses all day, living boring, unfulfilling lives. However, at the same time, some risks are just not worth taking, especially when you're hiking all by yourself. I'm grateful that Avery Schaller survived and I wish her the best of luck on her future adventures in the outdoors and I encourage you all to do the same in the comments. I also want to take a moment to appreciate the dispatchers and the search and rescue workers who help so many people in so many of the stories I cover on my channel. They're just incredible and they deserve all the love and respect in the world. Thank you so much to everybody for watching.